This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 21 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. We explore the ideas and dreams behind some of the leading entrepreneurs from around the world. Along the way, we will give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. Today on the episode, I'm going to be sharing some insights on how you can see the unknown. For people who have big ideas and dreams, this is an important topic to cover. Our guest on Monday's episode is Paul Gustafson. Here is a short sneak peek of that episode. Yeah, my name is Paul Gustafson. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Simventions Incorporated, and I'm the founding member of the John Maxwell team. And uh, I'm also an author of the book Leaders Press On and a co-host of a bi-monthly podcast called Leading the Millennials that I co-host with Ken Tarr, who serves in the reserves for the U.S. Marines. You know, in college, I had a dream to launch a business. I remember it distinctly, and I, I thought, maybe one day, maybe one day. And uh, for a number of years, I just kind of let it sit. I didn't do anything with it. I didn't know how, sort of fearful. And uh, I I ran into a couple other guys who also had a dream to start a business. And we started kicking it around. We're like, well, why not? Who says that we can? So I think it was that connection with other folks who like-minded, who wanted to, to launch something. And we did it together, the three of us. And we launched that business. And, uh, Lo and behold, we went from three, now we're 240 employees, so it's been pretty powerful. Make sure to come back and check out Monday's episode with Paul Gustafson. Now let's jump into today's episode all about seeing the unknown. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host and so excited to have you along for today's episode. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to let you know about a free resource that we're giving away on our website. We have two guides. One is overcoming the unknown, and the other guide is how to know when you found your dream. You can get both of those completely for free by swinging on over to jumblethink.com slash guide. Again, that's jumblethink.com slash guide. I also want to take a moment and encourage you, wherever you're listening to this podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, iHeartRadio, so many other great places. Click that subscribe button so you never miss another episode of the Jumble Think Podcast. Now let's dive into the conversation all about seeing the unknown. I am so excited about today's topic. We're talking all about seeing the unknown. Uh, Last time on uh, one of these episodes where it was just me sharing about the topic, we talked about overcoming the unknown. And, you know, we're using the same word, but we're looking at that word from different perspectives perspectives. Overcoming the unknown is all about overcoming fear and obstacles and responding. It's it's very defensive in a lot of ways because you're responding to situations, you're responding to uh, unknown situations, and you're adapting. On the flip side, seeing the unknown is all about being proactive, the foresight, the, the understanding of what's about to come and making the right moves before anyone else knows or a select few know. If you haven't already, make sure to check out that other episode where we talk about overcoming the unknown. It's something that all of us have to deal with, but not all of us choose to live in a place where we see the unknown, where we look to the future, where we begin to innovate, where we begin to make changes and preparation for what's to come. Seeing the unknown can apply to so many things. I think of the economic downturn uh, several years ago and how there were people who knew that that was coming. They saw the markers. They saw the things that were happening, and they were prepared. They had set up themselves for success for the future, whereas other people were responding to that and overcoming the unknown and responding to the situations that they faced. One of the best ways we can learn how to be a visionary, whether it's a visionary artist, a visionary leader, an innovator, is to look at other people who have been down this road. We can look at modern times, people like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Sam Walton, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Mary Kay Ash, and John F. Kennedy. All these people were visionaries. They saw what others didn't. For Steve Jobs, he saw the power of personal computers, just as Bill Gates did. For Elon Musk, he saw how to use transactions to generate revenue or the cars of the future or space. For Sam Walton, he saw a shopping experience that no one else had ever experienced before. For Mark Zuckerberg, he understood how to move community past the physical and into the virtual. 
For Mary Kay Ash, she understood how to make a, a cosmetics company that rivaled how everyone else has done it and changed the game to reach more people. And for John F. Kennedy, one of his crowning achievements was being the voice that helped move space exploration forward. I think of when he said we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things not because they're easy, but because they are hard. All of these people were able to see what others couldn't see. The list doesn't stop there, and it doesn't just stop in today's time. We can look back at Henry Ford or Thomas Edison. We can look at Walt Disney and, and how he revolutionized animation, storytelling, and cinema. We can look to Einstein and how he looked in mathematics and science and created philosophies that were beyond his time. We look at Thomas Jefferson and John Adams and how they wrote a Declaration of Independence that created a foundation for humanity and democracy. We look at people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his ability to uh, tell a story and involve people in a movement that changed how we view each other at a race level. We look at people like Ray Kroc and how he was able to revolutionize, not something he created, but be able to take McDonald's to the global market and then create an entire new space for fast food. Going back even further, we can look at Martin Luther and his 95 Thesis and how that created the Reformation in the church. We can look at Leonardo da Vinci and his inventions, his art, his philosophies and how it impacts us today. Or Vincent van Gogh and how he was able to see art in a way that no one else could. And we can also look at Milton Hershey and how he built a chocolate empire that now has such a philanthropic view and in a company that's left a legacy beyond chocolate and into the children and people in need that it served. All of these people have something in common. They were able to see what others couldn't in a time in which the, the society, the culture was ready for a revolution. If you were to go deeper outside of this episode and begin to study these people, begin to understand what made them them, you would see some traits that were universal, but you'd also see some traits that were unique. By studying them, you can get insights into how you can become a visionary, how you can become a person that sees the unknown like they did. Now, we don't have the time to dive into each of their lives, to tell their stories, to understand the traits behind them, but we can take a moment to look at their lives and begin to see some traits and, and things that made these people visionary, whether it was in art, whether it was in science, whether it was in politics, whether it was in innovation and business. So what are some of the traits of these visionary leaders? As I was preparing for this episode and researching this, I found 10 traits that were somewhat universal among most of the innovators I was studying, uh, most of the visionary leaders. And some of these are stronger for one visionary over another. Some of these are missing in uh, some visionaries, um, but these were traits that were pretty common. The first trait is their ability to imagine, to be imaginative, or having or showing creativity and inventiveness. These were people that took time specifically to think and process and imagine and dream and, and take time to clear their mind from the tasks, from the everyday, and start to, to take time to think. Part of seeing the unknown is simply the ability to take time to leave free space uh, to, to dream, to imagine. And all of these visionary leaders had that trait. They took time to reflect. They took time to think. And they weren't so focused on just the work. They weren't just so focused on getting into the nitty gritty, but they took time to reflect and refresh and, and find that newness. And in that, they were able to imagine. The second trait is an open-mindedness. They were open to alternative points of view. they surrounded themselves with people that had opposing views and they were open to having dialogues, conversations and arguments to really, you know, go against the status quo and start asking the questions, what if or why not? They were able to see the flaws in conventional thinking and begin to have an open perspective into the possibilities. That led them to another thing, which was that they re were resolute. Once they had a very defined point of view, they became very resolute, very absolute in the moving forward. They, you know, were still willing to question things and look at other point of, points of view, but they knew that they were on the right course and they started moving forward, which leads us to the fourth uh, trait of a visionary leader, and that is their persistent. 
stubborn in a lot of ways. They keep going even when others would stop. When the things get tough, they keep on pushing in. Which leads us to the fifth thing. They're bold and not timid. You think of these leaders, and and Einstein is probably one of the, the best ones because you see the pictures and you just go, this is a guy who thinks differently just because of the way he looks. They are bold in their opinions. They're bold in their thoughts. They're bold in standing up for their beliefs, and they won't back down. Which leads us to the sixth thing, which seems to go against that a little bit, which is they're empathetic to others. Well, some of these people were simply kind people, and they were very generous, and they they loved being around people. But I'm not just talking about that level of empathy towards others. I'm also talking about this empathy that says, I understand what others need, what others want, what others are missing in their life, and I can make it. I mean, the iPhone, uh, which is was really one of the first smartphones is a great example of this. No one knew that they needed it. They were content with their regular flip phones or their home phone or text messaging. But this new empathy towards others and understanding what their needs and desires were before they did allowed Apple and Steve Jobs to innovate something that no one knew that they needed. But because of their empathy to others, their their desire to understand what others need and what they want, they were able to create amazing products. Moving past empathy for others, they moved into a new phase, which is inspiring others. They were able to take this product, this service, this message, this idea, and communicate it to others so that others would go, I see it. I haven't experienced it yet, but I see what you're talking about. And they're able to inspire other people to greatness. They're able to inspire other people to mobilize around the idea. They're able to inspire others to share the story or the product with their friends, their family members, their coworkers, their community. And these visionary leaders inspire them in such a way that that the people that follow them, the people that believe in what they stand for, are willing to do anything for these people. Which leads to number eight. Visionary leaders are magnetic, but they're also inclusive. They invite others not only to see the vision, they invite others to not only see the future, but also invite others to become part of the vision, part of the story, part of the journey of creating this product, this service, this message. But visionary leaders don't stop there. Number nine is that when they invite people to be part of the story, they begin to collaborate. They begin to evolve the product, the service, the idea in a collaborative formation in which other people have a voice, other people have input, other people are important to the story of what's going on. That leads me to the final trait of many visionary leaders, that they're optimistic. They see the potential. They see the best of what can come based on the dreams, ideas, and and the unknown that they want to create. Okay, I know I said that there were 10 traits, but there is one more, and that is that they're able to bounce vision and action. Another way to say this is they're not only seeing the unknown, but they're also creating it. A lot of visionaries, a lot of people who are innovating aren't just thinkers. They're actually doers. And it's the the cohabitation of both things and the balance between that vision and seeing the unknown and then also taking action and creating the unknown. Being a visionary, seeing the unknown is not an easy thing because you're going to be going against others who are comfortable with their current thinking. You're going to go against the status quo, the standard in which others buy into. There's a great quote by this guy named Andrew Frawley, and uh, it's from an article. The article is very weird, but I love this quote from it. It says, to see the world differently, you must first traverse hell. Being a visionary, creating the future, seeing the unknown, going to new lengths, new possibilities, uh, it's going to be a hard journey. And visionary leaders, visionaries with amazing ideas, they all go through their own personal hell, whether it's the acceptance of their idea, their dreams, their products, the viewpoint of others. They always go through a season where they have to fight for what they believe in. They have to see the world differently And when they do that, that goes against what everyone else wants to accept. There's been all kinds of studies around what it takes to be a visionary, to be a creative that is creating and innovating, that's changing the future. One of the big studies was called the Big Five Personality Test, and it gets into five areas in which you study. And a lot of innovators, a lot of visionaries follow those traits. 
Uh, there's another one that was part of that called the eye test in which they took two colors and they showed one color in one eye, one color in the other eye. And they found that some people would see the colors rotate back and forth. Maybe it was green and red. So they'd see red and then green, red and then green. And then they found that this other group of people who tended to be a little bit more visionary, tended to be a little bit more creative, they would take and combine the two colors uh, and, and have this hybrid kind of color side by side. You can go on and on and find all kinds of studies into this type of individual, which leads us to a question. Are people born as visionary people? Are people taught to be visionaries? Or is it something that they can learn and grow and, and craft that skill set into being a visionary? I think it's probably a little bit of all of that. But there are some things that we can do. There are some things that you can do that will help you through that process of becoming that visionary, being able to see the unknown. So here are a few tips. Number one, you can reimagine how things are. I also like to call this reforming reality. You can take something that's meant for one thing and make it into something that's used for another thing. You can also take an idea and evolve that idea. You know, you don't have to accept how things currently are. This is moving away from the status quo into a new reality, a changed reality. This is going against the, the, the flow of normal and going abnormal. Now, it's not always good to reinvent things. It's not always good to reimagine things. And it's not always good to have a different reality. But often, if you take this reimagined uh, reality, you can actually innovate and dream and see things others can't. Number two, see it from an outsider's perspective. Often we are in the mix of the conversation and many people, you know, when they're in the normal flow of life, they're just going with the flow. What you need to do is see it how others would see it if they weren't in that flow, if they were coming in from the outside and looking into the situation. That can give you fresh perspectives and ideas on common issues or ideas and push you into a new reality that helps you go much deeper. Number three, begin to ask why not. Many people ask and say the things like, well, why would you want to change that? It's always worked. Why do it differently? But the way you innovate, the way that you become a visionary is by asking why not. I mean, this is what Elon Musk and others have done with changing how we build cars and how we utilize cars. This is being done on how we communicate through social media instead of through face-to-face -face community. So if you begin to ask what not, you can see what others aren't seeing. You can become that visionary leader. Number four, ask what if. What if things were different? What if you could do something? What if the limitations were removed? What if you had all the money in the world? What if is a question that is great to ask because it pushes you into a place of, you know, dreaming and removing the limitations that we often put on ourselves. Number five is all about combining supporting concepts. I've heard this called many different things, but it's when you take one idea and you marry it with another idea, you take one product, marry it with another product, you take two things and basically combine it into a new thing. And this is a great way to be a visionary because what you're doing is you're building on the shoulders of others at this point. You're not just going out there trying to figure it out on your own, but you have a foundation in which you can innovate. You can have a vision further by using the shoulders of others, by taking these two ideas and making them into something. Something fresh. Number six is connecting opposing thoughts or theories. Sometimes it's not about finding supporting concepts. Sometimes it's about taking two things that are opposing and making something new by taking the contradiction between the two, seeing the, the void between the two, and creating a new third option instead of just the two opposing thoughts or theories. My final tip, number seven, is I think one of the best ones that you can utilize, and that's learn. Get a deep knowledge about the topic that interests you. Get into understanding the nitty-gritty of it. Look at those amazing visionaries, those idea makers that are innovating the future or have innovated the future, who saw the unknown and created it. By learning, by diving deep into the knowledge around us, we can begin to unlock the, the, the things holding us back from seeing the unknown. 
ultimately it all starts with a choice. Whether you're born to be a visionary or whether you're learning to be a visionary, it's a choice. You have to choose to step into that lifestyle that that enables you to see the unknown, that begins to allow you to walk in the unknown. Patrick Overton wrote this poem called The Leaning Tree, and in it he says this, when you walk to the edge of all the light you have and you take that first step into the darkness of the unknown, you must believe that one of two things will happen. There will be something solid for you to stand upon or you will be taught to fly. I just love that poem. I think it's a really powerful illustration of, of knowing that just because the unknown's there and being able to see into it, uh, you're still taking the risk. And I want to encourage you today. When you want to be this visionary, when you want to live in a place of seeing the unknown, you have to take the first step. You have to walk into the unknown. You have to face the unknown. And you have to begin to... Uh, Imagine a future that's different than what you've seen before. If you've listened to the Jumble Think podcast in the past, you know that we are all about helping people launch into their big ideas and dreams. Being a visionary, seeing the future is part of that journey of chasing the unknown and making your dreams and ideas a reality. We believe that the world needs you more than ever, that your big idea and dream, whether it impacts a local community or a global uh, society, is important, it's significant, and we need you to live in that purpose and destiny. So, you want to see the unknown, I want to encourage you to start taking those steps to move forward, to start seeing the unknown unlocked to you. So get out there, begin seeing the unknown, and begin to change the world around you. I want to thank you for tuning into today's episode all about seeing the unknown. I hope it's helped you on your journey of being that big dreamer, that idea maker, and changing the world. If you're ready to become that visionary leader, that dreamer maker, innovator, or influencer, and you want some help along your journey, maybe you're looking for a mentor, or a coach, or a consultant, we would love to help you. We've worked with hundreds of companies and individuals to help them achieve their big idea and dream and change the world around them. You can swing on over to jumblethink.com and learn more about our coaching and consulting services. While you are at jumblethink.com, I want to encourage you to check out two free guides that we're offering on our website right now. The first guide is Overcoming the Unknown, and the second guide is How to Know When You Have Found Your Dreams. You can find both of those free guides under the resources section on the jumblethink.com website. Once again, we want to thank you for tuning in to today's episode. It's been a privilege to have you along for today's uh, topic about seeing the unknown. I hope it's encouraged you and also given you some amazing tools to help you on your journey of being that dreamer, that idea maker that you long to be. Now it's up to you. I want to encourage you. Get out there. Start chasing that dream. Start making those ideas become real and changing the world around you. Mères de famille, les enfants peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps. Vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.